Um, so my name is Kelly Biedenweg, um, and you honestly can pronounce it however you want, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so I'm coming from the natural resources field. Um, the thing I'm seeing that's in common with all of us maybe is our interest in society and social justice. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in marine biology, a master's in conservation biology, but then a PhD in what we call the human dimensions of natural resources. I don't know if you've heard of that, but the idea being that We've, in Western society, have done a really good job in natural resource management of separating the natural system from the social system without recognizing the inherent feedbacks that humans and, and, and nature are totally connected, both in the fact that we choose to manage those natural resources through our biases and our worldviews, but also in how they um, impact, how our management impacts humans um, equitably and inequitably. So one of the ways that we have been um, trying to bring together the human and social, the human and natural systems more in natural resource management is through developing well-being indicators for all of our natural resource areas. So this could be in a, a, um, a forest protected area, it could be a marine protected area. And so, for example, I'm the only social scientist in my department of fisheries and wildlife, and we've got like 30 faculty. Um, and so it's getting more and more common to bring in a social scientist who has natural resource training, who can do that like translation of social science principles um, and help us do better management by understanding both us as managers and the people that we're affecting. Um, and so <clears throat> why would we create indicators? Well, the, the idea of creating indicators is, one, it, it, I mean, it's like with anything, it helps you actually like tr be transparent about what it is you're trying to do. Um, and two, it really supports funding. It really helps everybody get on the same page. A lot of natural resource management is collaborative. So we're working with um, governments, nonprofits, educational systems. We're all working together to conserve a system, usually. Um, and that's really where my expertise is, is coordinating and collaborating um, different institutions in that. Um, so I didn't start out wanting to work specifically in marine protected areas, but it's just where my career has taken me. Um, and so there are marine protected areas all over the world. Um, it's a huge push right now with the United Nations and with several um, international governments we want to have. 30% of the ocean um, in protected areas by 2030. Um, whether I agree with that or not, that's just what the <laughs> United Nations has done. And so I have mostly been working um, in this specific topic in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Um, and then, as you know, Chile is a really fun, fun, fundamental comparable comparison, right? We're about the same um, latitude, we're still in the Pacific Ocean. Um, and Chile, especially in Patagonia, has been developing marine reserves and marine protected areas. So um, <clears throat> this is considered kind of marine protected areas, is considered kind of the next frontier for integrating social and ecological benefits of resource conservation. I did work in the Amazon for 10 years. Um, forest systems are, are already ahead because of the fact that there's tenure. Like you can draw lines around things and you can start assigning um, responsibilities. Um, marine systems we're starting to draw lines around things, and that's kind of like this is why it's time to have these conversations. Um, so where this all started, I don't know if you can see, is a, um, a paper that some colleagues and I published um, now like in 2016, where we created a um, framework for thinking about what, what are the different ways that protecting marine areas can influence people in positive and negative ways. And not just thinking economically, because historically we've just thought, what are the economic ramifications for fishermen? Um, but there's so many, especially if we're thinking about equity, cultural issues, um, because we have a lot of traditional communities that are um, on, in marine protected areas, but also just psychological benefits, um, social benefits, and whatnot. And so using this framework, um, this is <coughs> now, these are the indicators that we use in Puget Sound, Washington State. So this is an area of six million people. Um, we work with hundreds of state, county, um, and city governments and federal governments and nonprofit agencies and academic institutions to monitor all of these indicators and then use these to set priorities for how we're going to spend our millions of dollars for restoration activities in the region. And so um, this whole, these are all ecological indicators and when I came on board 10 years ago, none of these human health or quality of life indicators existed, and so that was my postdoctoral work. Went and did three years of interviews with people all over the region. You're sampling, you know, sampling across different types of communities, identifying what would be the most important indicators. 
recreating this, and now this is now fundamental if anybody's going to get state or federal funding to implement a restoration plan in the region, they have to identify how they're affecting any of these human factors as well. Um, the real selling point for most people is it's social equity. Um, but for me, it's also just understanding human behavior, the feedback mechanism. If you're not addressing human needs, then you don't have buy-in to begin with to get the money to do the restoration. <laughs> and so, um, but the biggest selling point right now is equity. Um, I'm also currently the PI on evaluating Oregon's marine reserves. So Oregon has six marine reserves that were established five years ago. Similarly, with the idea of benefiting the social, um, the communities there. So my colleague is doing the ecological evaluation, I'm doing the social evaluation. Um, and so this is a burgeoning, growing idea, um, including here in Chile. Um, there are not very many, as you can probably guess, not very many scientists in Chile who are social scientists working in natural resources. It's, there's not many of us in the world. We tend to know all of each other. Um, but I do have a colleague, Dr. Laura Navoal, um, and she's at the Centro Ideal, which is um, the Centro de Investigación Dinámica de Ecosistemas Marinas de Altos Latitudes. It is probably the best um, research center for integrating social and ecological science in Chile. Um, and so she and I are working with Pew, which is a nonprofit organization who does a lot of marine conservation, um, and in, in Ministerio del Ambiente, <coughs> del Ambiente perdón, um, because all of the different protected areas in um, Patagonia, there's dozens of them, um, they are very different in how they're managed. So some of them are managed by um, a nonprofit organization entirely. Some of them are a co uh, collaboration between the Ministerio and Pew, for example, or another um, organization. And so we are specifically selecting two sites. These are actually quite big reserves. Um, but to come up with some indicators for those two sites in collaboration with those agencies, actually collect data, have some baseline data, and then Pew thinks that they want to monitor the data every couple of years. I'm not totally convinced they will. Uh, <laughs> it's a big financial investment to do that. Um, but this is just starting an initiative of um, creating these well-being indicators for Chilean marine protected areas. So um, the current government is really interested in this as becoming a national um, idea. I obviously only have four months, but with Laura, we plan on continuing this. This could be my next 10-year project, um, and that's the idea. This is one of the things I'm doing. Obviously, um, Fulbright has teaching associated with it. I won't be teaching classes, but um, one of the things I do a lot of is workshops for both graduate students and natural resource managers in terms of what are social, what is social science, how does social science contribute to natural resource management. So we have lots of ideas for how we'll do either weekend or week-long workshops. Where is Ideal located? So it's at, sorry, I should have told you. Um, so um, they are, they have a research center in Punta Arenas, mm -hmm. but they are affiliated with Universidad Austral in Valdivia. So I will be in Valdivia for the first couple of months while we're planning, and then our first site will be in Aysen, and then our second site will be in Punta Arenas. So I'll probably be like two months, one month, one month, hoping to just go south and then head out. <laughs>